All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have got another versus video from you, which will be Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas versus Salt Lake City, Utah and surrounding areas. Why would anyone move to Dallas, Fort Worth versus Salt Lake or Salt Lake versus Dallas, Fort Worth? Well, we are about to get into it right now. First, I want to introduce you to the opponent, the worthy opponent, Justin from Salt Lake City, Utah. You want to tell them a little bit about yourself really quickly, kind of exactly where you are and what you're up to. Then we'll talk about one city versus the other. Uh, I, I mainly service all of the, the northern Utah market from pretty much middle of Utah all the way up to the northern tip of it. Uh, I personally live in a little town called Lake Point, Utah. It's kind of been a little older. You, you get away from this, the hustle and bustle of the city, but you're still close enough to go catch a jazz game. Nice. So Justin Sisson, Salt Lake City, Utah, Todd Tremonti, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, with offices in Richardson and Fort Worth. But none of that matters as much as which city is your better option if you're thinking about making a move. So really quick, Justin, go ahead, state your clearly super flawed, probably terribly biased opinion as to why somebody who had a choice between Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, and Salt Lake City, Utah. Why would they choose Salt Lake City? I mean, first off, Todd, we live in a Bob Ross photograph. Like, you see all <laughs> those paintings? Like, Bob Ross, no offense to Texas, but he's not painting those little, those planes out there. He's painting these majestic mountains, snow-capped. And for me personally, that's, that's just, that, that is just number one. All right, so here's the deal. Clearly, because you're not from the area, you don't know what you're talking about. We have some mountains, we, the, the foothills of the Rockies. We're, get, we're getting things going in Northwest Texas, not in Dallas, Fort Worth, by the way, but here in Dallas, Fort Worth, number one, we've got more of everything, right? So if you're, if you're thinking about making a move to Dallas, Fort Worth, we have an international airport that is one of the largest, most efficiently run airports, which means you can get anywhere you want. We're centrally located in the United States, which means if you want to go visit that Bob Ross painting, you can do that. And then you can come right back to DFW where affordability and options and opportunity is almost always in a favorable position to most of the rest of the country. No negatives about Salt Lake City. Whether the market's up, the market's down, employment's up, employment's down, jobs are up, jobs are down. We tend to have a really stable, safe, attractive environment to live in. So yes, you know, it's a little bit hard to compete with snow-capped mountains. We do get, we do have some technical qualifies as mountains <laughs> and we occasionally get some snow. But I'm not going to argue about the Bob Ross painting. What I will say is we've got every professional sport you could ever want with a, with a variety and plethora of additional entertainment and recreation options. What we have here in Dallas, Fort Worth, with Dallas and Fort Worth are two cities which each individually potentially offer more than Salt Lake City does on its own. What say you, Justin? I mean, technically, you're right. You know, you have this huge... You know, I would love to have a, an MLB team here. I would love to have an NFL team here. Um, we, we do have the Jazz. That is a huge plus. I would even argue that, you know, we do kind of have it all. If you're looking to be like myself out in the middle of quote unquote nowhere and you want the little countryside, you can have that. If you want to be downtown where, where everything is happening, you can be there. And if you were like a geographical oddity, it's like uh, George Cooney says, we're 30 minutes from everywhere. You know, that, that, <laughs> that is Salt Lake City, unless you're trying to go to the opposite end of the state. That, and I would say with five, five, count them, Todd, we have five national parks. Mm. I, would, I would venture to say that we probably, we're probably the recreation capital. That's all I'm going to say, of the U.S. at least. I'm not going to say that we're better in that regard, but I'm going to talk about ways that we've got lots of recreational opportunities. I think we smoke you guys when it comes to like non-outdoor recreation because we've got every sort of commercial development in the history of the planet. But when it comes to outdoor activity, Texas has phenomenal hunting, depending on whether you're hunting, you know, bird hunting, white-tailed deer, hogs, whatever. We also hey, what are hogs? We don't have those out here. What are those? That's right. They are potentially a pest, but also uh, sometimes delicious to eat. We do have, you know, a, a plethora of, they're man-made, but a bunch of lakes for outdoor record, boating, fishing, you know, rivers and, and, and waterways. We've got really, really good options for outdoor recreation in that regard. When it comes to, you know, things that you can do anywhere, 
we tend to have some really good options for those in regard to mountain biking terrain, parks and trails for hiking, camping. Because we have a warmer climate most of the year, we don't tend to lose much of the year for outdoor recreation. There's definitely some really, really hot times, but most years that outdoor recreational activity is happening through the fall, through the winter, well in, you know, through the spring and into summer. Really the only downtime would be if you're trying to beat the heat and many of those outdoor recreational opportunities aren't. So again, not trying to compete necessarily uh, with the variety of terrain that, uh, that Utah has or the Salt Lake area, but certainly not going to say that we don't have a huge variety of outdoor activity, whether that be hunting, fishing, you know, motorcycles, off-road stuff, Jeeps, four-wheel drive, m- mountain biking, hiking, all those things. Camping is, is, is really, really big in the area as well. Let me, let me throw another category at you really quick, just residential affordability, right? So I'm thinking about moving maybe Salt Lake, maybe Texas, maybe even some other areas. What's that going to look like? What am I going to get for my money? What's the variety of housing options I have? What's Salt Lake look like in that regard? And then we'll give them a Dallas Fort Worth option as well. So where, where Dallas is probably going to adjust out is just the, the purchase price of the home because you guys have lower, you, you have lower barrier to entry. But where we really win is in the property taxes. We don't, our property taxes aren't quite as high as they are in Dallas. A lot of the people I've been talking to lately have been from Texas <laughs> wanting to move to Utah Oh, I see. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Okay. All right. I mean, Hey, I'm just, I'm just trying to be honest, Todd. I'm not trying to sway anybody. I swear. It's my totally unbiased opinion, but Mm -hmm. you know, while our, our home home prices are a little bit higher than yours, where we win is on the, on the taxes side of things where, you know, if you want a a home that might cost you a little bit more, but your taxes, and it kind of usually evens the playing field out to be, almost apples to apples as far as, yeah, our prices might be here, but the property taxes definitely help cover that gap. From what I understand that people are telling me that are currently living in Texas. Okay. So you keep pounding that drum that people from Texas are moving to Utah. <laughs> I, maybe, maybe the 12 people that did that all called you, whatever. I wish I had a more accurate count, but uh, we don't have a ton of people moving here from Utah. Uh, we certainly have had some. The interesting thing is I think a lot of people watching this video hopefully are, are, are from neither of our two states, but they're in other states or other areas or countries thinking about making a move to one of those two, these two states. Some of the reasons that people would move to one versus the other are, are pretty similar. Now, you brought up state in, uh, uh, property tax, so I've got to bring up state income tax. I don't know how much you guys are enjoying that in Utah, but I can tell you the people that are running to move to Texas really enjoy that we have none. That's right. Zero yep. state income tax. So I need to point that out because a lot of times folks that are moving to the area, lots of them are coming from California or Ohio or the Northeast where their state does have a significant state or local income tax, but they don't have much of a property tax at all. And they want, they know they're going to, there's going to be some trade-off, but they want to know net net, how does that work out? And for most people, even with a, two, two and a half percent property tax, they're going to come out way ahead. And I appreciate you making that point for me because the total overall housing cost is lower. So they're being taxed on a lower amount. Uh, It's a fairly approachable tax rate. We would all love it to be lower, uh, but compared to- everybody would love their taxes to be lower in general. Right. (laughs) We can agree on that one, my friend. Uh, But compared to the total tax burden in states where there's a state income tax and other local taxes, it tends to be a lower tax burden in the state of Texas, even factoring in that property tax. So that being said, what, what does my money get me? Let's just say 500,000 bucks. Let, let's talk Salt Lake specifically about how far is that going to go in a, a house, a condo or a townhome, or what, what's the most popular type of housing in the area? Tell me a little bit more about if I had a half million dollar budget to buy a house and I'm coming to Salt Lake, what options might I have? Well, first off, let me just explain Salt Lake for those of you who have never been here. We have the I-15 that runs right down the middle. On the east side towards those beautiful mountains we've already talked about, your homes are going to be more expensive. And as you go to the west, further away from those mountains, your homes are going to be way more affordable. On the on the east side, you could get a townhome, maybe a condo, just depending on how big the condo is. I mean, you can get million-dollar condos in downtown Salt Lake on that east side. But on the west side, you open it up to 
larger townhomes, 2,500 square feet plus, and even into some single family homes as well. What are, what are the more traditional single family detached, meaning I've got a house, I've got a lot, it's all mine. I don't know if neighborhood is the right term for it, you know, but, but the, the, the typical maybe suburban Salt Lake City community, what, what is my dollar going to get me in that setting? You'd be getting a 35, 3,000 to 3,500 square foot home a quarter acre lot, you know, not going to have, you're not going to have the acres and acres, but you'd have a good yard. You'd have, you'd be in a decent neighborhood with some good schools. Um, You wouldn't be, you know, roughing it per se. (laughs) Yeah. Generally speaking, of course, all these terms are broad brushed. You can find a million exceptions to the, well, not a million, but you can find exceptions to these rules. The DFW version of that, by the way, the Dallas Fort Worth, Texas version of a half million dollar budget It probably does go a little bit further, not as much farther as it used to, but a $500,000 budget is going to get you access to pretty much any part of Dallas Fort Worth, geographically speaking. There's obviously neighborhoods and areas where that's not enough, and there are areas where that will go a very, very long way. But generally speaking, most areas of Dallas Fort Worth, a $500,000 budget is going to get you into probably a four bedroom or larger home, depending how close you are to town or how far you are out, 2,500 square feet up to as much as, you know, 3,500 square feet, probably a little bit more lot than Justin's talking about, but honestly, not a whole lot more quarter acre, maybe to a third of an acre. Once you start getting a little bit more land, that's where in Texas, we've had a very dramatic change in property value where uh, that land cost has just gone up, up, up. But for example, You could be 45 minutes north of Dallas, Texas right now, and a half million dollars would get you a quarter acre lot, but that could still get you a four or five bedroom house brand new. As you get closer to town and some of those older homes, you're going to get maybe a little bit less land and and, and similar amount of house. But if you're talking downtown, even at that $500,000 price point, there's not a ton of options anymore that close to town. If so, you're probably looking at a two, two or a three bed, two bath and and a a smaller condo townhome type deal or a much older, more outdated single family home. So not wildly different. Dallas is a larger market geographically, just kind of mileage wise, but (laughs) because Salt Lake is not bordered by another city like Dallas is with Fort Worth or Arlington or Frisco, you might define the communities a little bit differently because that whole thing is Salt Lake where Dallas is getting a very tight border because of Arlington, Fort Worth, Frisco, McKinney, all these other cities that kind of, obviously Justin lives in a small town that might be part of Salt Lake, but we have two major cities that are sort of sharing some border areas. What are some other things that people need to know about Salt Lake before we wrap this thing up that are unique value lifestyle benefits of being in that area versus other parts of the country? You got four seasons to do whatever you want with. Greatest snow on earth, might I add you, incredible mountain biking, hiking, lakes, you're into fishing. Again, very similar to Texas, weirdly enough. The the one thing that I do love, absolutely love about the lifestyle here is people are more friendly. Neighborhoods are filled with kids. I've lived in other parts of the country where that wasn't the case all the time. And it kind of made you feel like the odd one out. And then also, if you're not a heat person, you don't really enjoy the heat. There's Park City, who's up on the mountains. There are probably another 4,000 feet of elevation gain where it's 10, 15 degrees cooler in the summer. So when it's 105, it's a 95 up there. And if you really want to cool off, you can go all the way up to the snowbird ski resorts up on the top and you can cool off and it's only 60 degrees when it's 105 down here in the valleys. And so no, no better place to live. In Texas, you can escape the 105 degree heat, air conditioning. And, and that's, that's, <laughs> uh, that's about it. No, we, uh, you know, Dallas Fort Worth is unique for lots of reasons. The most commercially popular reason is kind of the cowboy theme, right? The Dallas Cowboys, the Fort Worth stockyards, the literal cowboy lifestyle. Now, obviously it is a massive metropolitan city. So the majority of people in Dallas Fort Worth are not wearing spurs and riding horses, although that stereotype is still funny, but that persona has kind of bled out into the community as a whole where there is an individualistic, self-reliant, entrepreneurial spirit that is in the area. But that's also sort of competing with a desire culturally to lean a little bit more towards like an L.A. lifestyle. And, And what I mean by that is a show of wealth, a show of success. And so Dallas and Fort Worth have very different cultures in that regard, where Fort Worth is really holding on to that 
we want to be a big, small town and feel connected and feel communal and, and stay tied to the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo, where Dallas, whether everyone's on board or not, has been a little bit more of a, a business focused, growth minded, you know, Jerry Jones, owner of the Cowboys kind of vibe of I want to drive a nicer car and give off that look. Obviously, not everybody shares that, but that's some of the culture. And some people are drawn to that. A lot of corporate headquarters, a lot of businesses are moving their corporate headquarters here because you have the entire variety of lifestyle, a tremendously diverse group of people, cultures, languages, foods, entertainment opportunities. And so big companies have said, look, anyone who works here can find what they're looking for in a community like Dallas Fort Worth. And in many ways that does make us unique. And so if that would be attractive to you and you're thinking about making a move to Dallas, Texas, our information will be below or around this video, depending on where you're seeing it, as will Justin's information. If you're thinking about making a move to the Salt Lake city area, you definitely want to get connected with Justin. He's on Team Bickmore, which is a small brokerage that really, really loves on their clients and provides phenomenal value, whether you're buying, moving to that market from outside or within the area, or if you're selling in that area and making a move maybe to Texas or another area. And our team makes a tremendous effort to do the same thing as well. So neither of us works alone. We have incredible people around us. If you're thinking about making a move to the area and you're just gathering information, reach out to us. We'd love to help you with that. You can comment below this video. We will respond to those comments. If you're ready for some one-on-one -on -one communication, click a link, call a phone number, email an email address below this video, and we would be thrilled to provide more value to you. Look, neither one of these communities is necessarily right or wrong, but one of them is going to be a better fit for you and your family. So dig in, investigate further. If we get some really, really good comments, maybe we'll come back and do a round two and follow up on some of those items. Any final thoughts, Justin, for folks that may be thinking about one of these communities versus the other one? Like you, like you said, Todd, it's going to be, it's not necessarily one's better than the other. It just depends on, on you and, and your individual circumstances. Honestly, um, I know some people that moved to Utah and they don't really like it and that's okay. I know some people that move here like myself who didn't really want to come to Utah. Um, and I love it way more than I ever thought I would. Yeah. What's funny is Texas has a historically really, really friendly, hospitable culture, right? The name Texas comes from Tejas, which is a loose translation of just friendly. The, the reality is that is still true in most areas, but there has been this sense that so many people are moving here that it's changing the culture a little bit. And I, I hate the fact that in certain forums and certain environments, YouTube comments being one of them, some people are saying, <laughs> don't come here. And the reality is they love it here. They're just not wanting it to change. So we want to maintain a friendly, welcoming culture uh, while also being an inviting place for other people to move. So Hopefully this video has been helpful for you and giving you some information, not only on the technical aspects of the market, but also just the feel of the market. But comment below, like this video if it's been helpful, share it with a friend that's maybe thinking about moving to one of these areas. And of course, if you subscribe, we'll keep making more videos like this for you in the future. Click that little bell and you'll know when we do it. Appreciate you tuning in. We'll check the comments below and we'll talk to you on the next one. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, Todd.